Uh, and uh, it's been brought up uh, by both George and you, got, you asked a great question, an Imagineer. Like what, what the heck's an Imagineer? I mean, true geeks know what an Imagineer is, but... Uh, um, I'm not sure what an Imagineer is. <laughs> I just called George a geek. Wait a minute. Sorry, George. But a cool, a cool, a cool geek? Does that help? But, so Imagineering is, no, I'll, I'll let you explain it because you're actually an Imagineer, but the magic behind the parks and then what would you explain? Walt Disney always wanted to make a theme park. He, I mean, this goes back a long, long way. He felt he could make something better than the parks he was going to where he was taking his own children. And he developed a small group of artists who came out of the early features. Mark Davis, Bob Coates. These were just A animators, A really very, very strong draftsmen. And he put them in a, um, he, he brought them in gave them the charge to develop a theme park. That group grew into what was called Walt Disney Imagineering. It was actually founded, and I believe, as a separate part of the company. It's like we have uh, multiple divisions. We have consumer products, animation, there's the interactive side. It's huge. But sometimes I get asked, oh, you work for Disney. Do you know Steve Lopez and consumer products? And I'm like, no. The company's just too big. I'm sorry, I don't know Steve Lopez anyway. It's an enormous company. Imagineering was set up to build and design the Disney theme parks. The first one was the one in Anaheim. The second one was in Florida. The third one, I believe, was in Paris, and so on and so forth. We're now building a theme park, and I'm working on it from here now on a laptop. I mean, I'm doing a lot of concept work uh, in Shanghai. In enormous park. Anyway, so Walt Disney Imagineering is a group of artists, and what I love about this division is you, you're in a meeting with an architect and someone from hydraulics because there's oil running through these AA figures, and you're working with budget people, and then you've got someone in landscape. It's really an interesting group of people. Anyway, that's what this group does. They design and they build the parks all over the world. Coolest project you've worked on or got to see the behind the scenes? I'd have to kill you. You kill me. Kill me later. Tell me now. Uh, <laughs> probably the coolest thing was I spent two and a half years directing Mickey's Film Her Magic, which is in Orlando. I don't know if any of you have seen it. It's a 10 minute 3D movie uh, starring Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse. The Basic plot to it is Mickey's going to conduct his orchestra. He's late. Donald Duck is prepping the stage for him, sees the sorcerer's hat, you know, from Fantasia, you know, the blue hat, puts it on his head, and all hell breaks loose. And when then we go into the movies with Donald Duck, Donald Duck and Beauty and the Beast, Donald Duck and Aladdin. I mean, it was great fun to work on. But because that was 3D, meaning you're wearing 3D glasses, the theater. It's the largest single screen, I believe even in the state. It's like 120 contiguous feet across. It's enormous. We built a mock-up of that theater in a hangar, an aviation hangar in Van Nuys, California, with four 70 millimeter projectors. It didn't have air conditioning, and it didn't look anywhere near what it looks like in Orlando. It's really hot, but we built an entire mock-up and spent two years testing footage. So feature animation animated it, we would get footage, we would put it in the two center 70 millimeter projectors, we'd all put glasses on, and there were rows of folding chairs at different spots in the hangar. So you have to imagine, this is just an enormous hangar with nothing in it except projectors and a screen. We built, from, we spent a lot of money getting this mock-up to make sure that all the stereo, meaning all the 3D effects, would work. That was probably the coolest project I've worked on. That and some of the cruise line work, but that was, that was pretty awesome. I'd say it was pretty cool. Very cool. And it's, it's a good reminder, too, uh, kind of career-wise, that you've, you've directed a Disney feature film, you worked in television animation, been an Imagineer. That seems like uh, you saw your advice for these guys. Like, have a broader view of what your potential career is and 
Yeah, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good way to put it. I, I think you bring the same skill set if you care about what it is that you're doing. I mean, I'm not working on features now. I have no problem with that. I'm directing a lot of small, what I consider little jewels. And by the way, Mickey's Full Heart Magic, that will play for the next 20 years. More people will see that movie. My name isn't on it, but I know. More people will see this effort. I have to tell you, it's a huge rush. Really, this is like an ego trip. It's kind of embarrassing. But I'll, when I go to Florida, I always go see it. And I go in the backstage. I have a pass. And I you know, come in through the back. And there's doors that lead me into the back so I can get right in. And I'll watch it with an audience. And it's a rush. I mean, I know it sounds corny, but I remember walking out with some kid, and he goes, Dad, that was awesome. And I felt like grabbing him, like, hey, man. <laughs> you tell that kid he's awesome. Man. It's, I don't know how else it's been. It's the coolest, coolest feeling. Versus you do a feature, that movie plays, you have no contact with the audience, but when you work on a, and direct something for Imagineering, you're, you're right there with the guests. I directed something for the Mexican pavilion, and we used the three caballeros. Are you familiar with that? The Jose Panchito Tunnel. We redid that attraction, and when, our, when I go, it's shameless, I have to admit, I'll ride, it's a boat ride through Mexico, with different screens, I don't know how many of you have seen it. If you haven't seen it, it's really worth seeing. Thank you. And again, it's just like, you know those Hitchcock scenes where he always shows up in his movie, you know, like egomaniac? <laughs> I have to admit, it's kind of an egomaniac thing to do. I, it's a rush, and it's also really educational because you're sitting there on the boat ride going, you know what, next time, that seems, we need the quicker loops, could have been better action. You, you, you're learning from comments around you. I've never heard you suck, but <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a really quick story. I paint, speaking of the words you suck, I paint uh, outside. I have a painting setup, and this just goes to show you, you've got to have like, you know, like thick skin. I was painting in California with some class, and I'm painting like some kind of statue and stuff. And two teenage kids come behind me, and they're like, they're looking at what I'm painting, and they look at the thing, they look at what I'm painting, and they go, "Hey, man, you suck." <laughs> wow, thanks, man. So you have to have thick skin to be in the arts. That's my, that, that's the, that's the message of that joke. Yeah. So George, in addition, right, also being a painter is part of his career. You can go to uh, scribnerart.com see all of the, his wide range of artwork. He's covering the Panama Canal right now. And, but the, in that same time that you're there, he's doing a lot of, uh, he has a lot of great paintings that just capture the unique culture of the Republic of Panama in the day of your life, which is very cool as well. I paint scenes of Disneyland as well. And if, sure. if you're curious, you can go to it, scribnerart.com. And you know, when I pitch to them, there's a number of us artists who do regular events for the parks and we'll paint scenes of the parks. And, you know, what I, liked, what I liked was the feeling of capturing like a day in the life of the park. Not doing it overly romanticized, you know, like Tinkerbell and Sparkle and stuff. But there seems to have been a pretty good response to it. It's, again, it's pretty gratifying, so. Like some. 